What's up guys? Welcome back or to the channel. And yep, usually when we start a video down here in the monkey cave, we're doing some kind of install. And it's not gonna be on the Rogue. <laughs> it's gonna be on the Gladiator today. And obviously you can tell by the title, we're throwing on a snorkel. And honestly, I've never been a snorkel guy. I never really wanted to throw on a snorkel. Personally, I don't like the look. Uh, it kind of makes it look like a little bit try hard, like you're really trying to make it look like you're an off-roader. But, um, but we have already hydro-locked one engine. And yeah, this thing is pretty much toast. I will be putting a new engine in it, so it is not over yet. And if you guys have been following the channel, I will give you more of an update on the TJ later. But since we already hydro-locked one engine, and we hydro-locked this thing in about two feet of water. So we were maybe like this deep on the tire. But the thing is, shit happens. I went too fast, I learned my lesson. I obviously made enough of a wall that it splashed up into the intake. Now, I don't plan on doing that again, but accidents happen and sometimes when you're entering a mud hole, it's a little bit deeper than you think and you don't actually know what that drop is gonna be like or if there's a drop halfway through or whatever. So just to uh, kind of have some insurance and be ready, that's why we got the snorkel for the JT, but we will be throwing one on the TJ eventually sooner than later but first we're going to throw an engine in there then we're going to get a snorkel because i don't really feel like doing any kind of mods or any work on it until it's up and running once it's up and running then we'll do anything that we need to get it back on the trail after hydro locking one engine yeah i think it's time to uh pretty much throw on a snorkel there's basically two styles that you can get and there is a couple different brands you can get like a mopar one you can get uh an afe you can get, there's there's a couple different companies that make them. This one is the Rugged Ridge. And the reason I went with this one is because it actually doesn't have any cutting. You don't need to cut your fenders. You don't need to cut your hood. You do need to cut a piece of plastic on the inside of your engine bay. But you can see this is the one that replaces your actual cowl piece. And you have the high snorkel or the low snorkel. And I figured, well, since we've already destroyed one engine, might as well get some insurance going. So this is the one for the JL and the JT because these vehicles are the same basically from the rear doors forward. So let's go, let's tear it apart. Let's throw this in because today is Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. Tomorrow we're going on a trail. It's a new trail that I've never done before. And from the looks of it, there's gonna be a couple of water crossings. And I don't plan on uh, going full submarine mode, but like I said, this is just some insurance just in case of any kind of weird accidents or anything that splashes up or anything like that so i'd rather have this than look for an engine because the engine for the tj was 700 bucks engine for this will not be 700 bucks <laughs> so let's go let's throw an engine in this thing real uh, let's throw an engine let's throw the snorkel in this thing real quick and let's get it done first we have to take off the factory grill so we got to pop off all of these clips and I think there is about five or six of them along the front. There's one over here, one over here, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna pop those off real quick. And then I think the rest you just pull off by applying pressure to the front of the grill. So there we go, there's one. And these clips are really fragile. So if you do have a clip puller, then it really helps. Once you pop your last one off, you can see the entire grill starts to move and that's when you give it a little pull from the front. So you're gonna wanna give it a pull right in here. Yep, you can see there's one, one of the clips. Should be another one in the middle over here. But hold on, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna put you guys down for a second just so I can be a little bit more gentle. Okay, I hope I didn't break any of the clips. And you don't want to pull on it too far because if you have a camera like me, then there's a sprayer and a camera plugged in. 
So you're going to want to unclip both of those. On the back of the grill, you will have down by the corner here, one plug. And I believe this is for my camera and for your washer. It actually has a release. You kind of just press that little guy in there and it releases really nice. So that was actually pretty simple. And that connector is at the top. You can see there's that end of the connector there. And the other connector is down at the right over here. So we've got the grill off. Now we have to remove this support because then we have to get to that bolt behind the support. So I think we can loosen this, remove this and kind of just swing it out of the way. Next, we have to remove the actual air intake. So we have hose clamp, hose clamp, one, two, and I think we just have to remove the screws to take it off the top because we're not removing the bottom with the top. So I'm gonna take that out. Now you don't actually have to get the intake all the way out. You just have to kind of move it out of the way. So it's kind of loose. And now we do have to remove the air box. But before we do, you can see there is a bit of liquid in there already like there's yeah i did take it through the car wash so that probably is from that but you can see just from taking it through the car wash water does get in through this intake so it will also get in through the snorkel but the snorkel has an actual drain that's a little bit better than this these do have drain holes in the bottom you can see there's a couple holes in the bottom but yeah if you actually go through a deep enough puddle, it will suck water in. As you can see, even through the car wash, you do get water inside. Now the factory air box is super easy to take out. It's honestly just the two rubber grommets at the bottom there and one bolt, which is that guy right there on the fender. And after you do that, pull it out and you're gonna be removing this. This is your stock intake tube. Now I've always wondered how this is exactly routed and I'll show you guys today. So basically what you've got is in your grill, this intake tube which goes through here in here and comes out over here so you get a mixture of uh, air from your fender as well as cold air from the front coming in through that intake tube pushed up and then your air box sits like this so that doesn't actually connect to your air box what happens is your air comes through here in through the bottom and then it comes into your air box which has a few drainage holes so that is basically how you get your air to your engine with the stock system. But the thing is, with this, if water comes in through your fender, like if you get any water in behind your fender liner or under here, then it starts to get into this area where your intake is. So even though it's a little bit higher up, if any water gets in between here, which there is no gasket, there's a gasket there, but there's no gasket at the bottom here. So you can see you will have a gasket on the top, but there's no gasket on the bottom. So this does draw air directly from in here. You can see by the dirt, it draws air directly from there too. So that is where you would get that water. If any water splashes up or you kick up any water or any water decides to get in behind your fender liner, then bad time. So that is basically why I'm doing this. I'm not doing this because I wanna be doing any kind of crazy submerging or driving my Jeep with water over the headlights. I'm still not planning to do over the 30 inches that is recommended or 35. There's different things that people say, but I'm gonna go with 30. All of the breathers on your Jeep are routed to about 30 inches. The back axle breather is against the floor in the back. The front axle breather is routed into the fender somewhere over here which I don't see at the moment, but I did see it before and it's not that hard to find if you know what you're looking for, which I don't. <laughs> so let's see, let me try to follow it back. We go over there. So it's routed right behind here. So where to go? 
right into the top over here somewhere. There it is. So that white cap in there, oh, this guy right here that I'm holding is your front axle breather. So if you get any water above the top of your shock, that's when that axle breather is actually gonna get compromised. I'm definitely not planning to do any water that's gonna be halfway up my door. So that's pretty much where your axle breather is, bottom of the door hinge. The rear axle breather is on the bottom of the floor, which is, I'd say, probably about there. And your transmission breather is located right here. This is your transmission breather and your transfer case is like a couple inches above your transfer case. So also basically where the floor is. However, all the electronics that run from your transmission, your shifter, all of that other stuff isn't waterproofed to be submerged. So you can do up to 30 inches. Once you lift your Jeep, you can add whatever lift you have to that 30 inches. But to be honest with you guys, I wouldn't really go any further than that. This is a safety precaution. This is more of just like a insurance that we're not gonna get any water in the engine, but there's a lot of other things that are gonna get compromised before that happens. And damn, look at this beefy ass filter. Like that's one hell of a filter. I have not had a filter like that in any vehicle. But now that we've got that out, we need to get this tube out and there's two little bolts at the front that we undid earlier. And there's one grommet just like so. And there she is. There's that tube that sits in the front there. So that we are not gonna reuse. Now you do have a hole here, but there isn't an actual route for the water to go up and just kind of seep up in there. Now, I think the reason we're removing this is because the way this sits and the way this sits, you can kind of see it sits just like that. And we don't want any water being pushed up into that section from the front. So we're gonna remove that and it's not gonna give us any kind of advantage at this point anyway, because we're gonna have this completely sealed and routed to the snorkel. And the snorkel will act like a cold air intake in a sense, because you're gonna have the ram effect of all of the air being pushed into that, that snorkel and into your intake. So I think we should be okay on that. Front. Next step was removing this cowl piece and super easy. It's one, two, three, and four. And those are right there. Now, it does tell you to take the antenna out. I didn't take my antenna out because I've got Shorty Rubber Guy. So Shorty Rubber Guy kind of moved out of the way enough for me to do it, so yeah. And there's another thing that you can learn right now. There's the drain from your roof. So that kind of goes right through there. But now, to get that other piece on that's gonna actually attach to our snorkel, we have to cut this little piece of plastic and you have to cut it right along that bend right there and right there to that line. So basically where that line is down to the other line. So we're gonna trim that out and then we can get our mounting piece in. I'm not gonna lie, at first when I grabbed this, I'm like, no, did they send me the wrong one? They sent me the one for the diesel, because the diesel intake's on that side. But no, I actually had it flipped the wrong way. So this should slip in like so. And if we move the antenna out of the way, this might be a two-handed operation. There we go. This is why they tell you to take the antenna out. But there we go. Now we have this in there. We can reuse the stock factory bolts to bolt it all up. And she fits around that little piece that we cut. And I can feel that, yeah, it clears it perfectly. Just enough room. So now 
One thing that they did include is, you can see how this pipe has the tendency to kind of do that. Well, they knew about that, and that's been an issue that people have been complaining about on the forums for a long time. So they included two of these. And these are like a little, basically, prop to keep it open. Okay, it's gonna take two hands to get that back in there, I think. But it is a metal prop that holds your pipe in the proper position under suction and under heat so that nothing warps and you always have optimal airflow. And it's always sealed because if it warps, it's not going to seal around the actual silicone pipe that's going to be around it. And snorkel is not going to be airtight or watertight, I should say. And at that point, defeats the purpose. So there, that's what that's going to look like. They include a bunch of grommets for you like this or push pins, I should say. They include a bunch of push pins for you to cover up the inside of your airbox. You can see there's a couple right there. And those are to seal off any holes in the bottom. Those are your factory drain holes, those four. And I will use silicone around those, which I have right there. But first I have to drill a hole for my new drain. And the new drain has an actual valve. So when you're doing any kind of water crossings, you'll be able to actually close it off and have a full seal. But if you're actually going and driving on a regular basis, daily driving, you can open it. So if you have any rain or any water or anything that gets in there, will actually still drain out as it should. So now we're gonna just drill that quick. I have camera died, but what I was about to say was, we're just gonna drill that hole in the lowest point of the box, which is right there to fit that fitting right here. So I'm gonna do that now, and then we should be able to reinstall the box. <laughs> Fitting in there. Now I'm just gonna throw a bit of silicone to kind of get a bead going and seal everything all up. And we are using RTV silicone because it is more resistant to oil and water as well as temperature. Oh, wow, that's a lot better. I had to cut the tip open a bit more because it was actually being a pain in the ass to get out. This stuff is thick. But I also don't want to get it too thick on there. I don't want to have like, you know, a party going on. It's pretty good. That one and that one came out nice. That one's kind of ugly. That one I touched. This one, she looks pretty sealed as well. So I think we're good to go on this front. Now we have to attach the actual new intake tube. And there is a gasket for that. And there is a grommet for that. But first, we've got our drain now. So we've got There we go, now we have our drain. So you can see it opens and closes just like that. For now, we're gonna leave it in the open position. We're just gonna tighten down the clamps, which I should have put on both of them. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm just getting dirty. This is the messy part. Oh, once you get the silicone out. So once you get the box in there, basically you reuse the two grommets that are down there, bolt it up right here. And before I put the connector tube to connect both pieces, you can see it has the little uh, like support on both sides. So they include two supports. And the next piece that's gonna go in is this tube. It gets a silicone guy on each end. And you can see it does not have the support. 
So I might end up having to get something for that. We will find out sooner than later because I will be taking this apart to paint it. And yes, I will be paint matching it. I want to paint match this. I'm going to paint match the snorkel. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do anything under the hood just because it's a waste of my time. But I might paint match this just so that it looks kind of cool under the hood. We'll see. And yeah, that is going to be another project that is going to complete the look and make everything kind of the way I want it to look because this black plastic, not that it doesn't match because we've got a lot of black accents, this is even the roof, but honestly, I think the blue will look a lot better. So I'm gonna tie everything up and then we'll get to actually doing the stack. And Vince joined us again. He's breaking shit over there. The Yo, calm down fam. <laughs> so we put everything together and we are using the high mount. Oh, there goes all my bolts. So we are using the high mount and Basically what you got to do is you got to throw gaskets in around this side this side and there's another gasket in on This side. So there's a rubber guy there plastic Another rubber guy And then rubber guy over here and if you use the low mount obviously you're gonna use the low mount and you don't have this piece So let's go bolt this up bolt on that head that Vince was just putting on his head and Then we are pretty much ready to go test it out and I'm interested to see what this thing is gonna sound like but first Let's close this hood up quick. If you can grab that for me, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you. I think everything's buttoned up under here. Oh, one thing I will mention to you guys, and I'm holding the the roof the, the roof. I'm holding the the thing with my head right now for you guys, but uh one person that I watched on YouTube, I'm not going to mention the video, <laughs> someone they were with put on a snorkel and they forgot to put on, they forgot to do this clamp back up and they hydro lock their Jeep by sucking water right through there. So definitely snug up all of your clamps, make sure you do this one, make sure you do this one and just get everything nice and tight and don't forget all of the clamps on that side over there. And now, what the fuck is that? Oh, makes it makes closing the hood not possible. What's going on here? Something's in there. What's going on? Is it from the insulation? Is it because of the insulation? Okay, let me figure this out. Well, we got her installed. And for under the hood, what I had to end up doing was cutting that piece of insulation out because it just would not fit with the new tube. And I figured I'm not gonna be taking the tube out anytime soon. So I cut the insulation because yeah. And interesting fact, those are actually real vents. They do vent into that little hole, so not much, but they do something. Now, let's go for a drive and let's see if it actually sounds any different and just how it performs. Well, I went on a short drive. I had to go pick up Justine from work and everything is pretty much as it should be. No noises. Actually, the intake sounds exactly how it sounded before. There's no new whistle, there's no new anything it basically sounds exactly like stock and it drives exactly like stock i have noticed that it is burning a little bit less fuel and a lot of people have mentioned that in the comments but other than that it honestly drives fine and you can see it doesn't really move it doesn't really vibrate or rattle if you do go over a bump you'll kind of see it shimmy a little bit but it hasn't really touched the actual pillar there and yeah so far so good and i'm gonna show you guys the drain but first if you know about the triple honk there is different ways of getting rid of it and one of the ways is getting yourself a taser jl or a taser mini or getting yourself a set of these for eight bucks so these are going to be awesome for actually on the trail because now oh it still does the triple honk but at least now we're not gonna have the beeping when we're sitting there and we're driving around without the seatbelt. I thought that it would still kind of think that you were in the vehicle and not do the triple honk. I guess it still does that if you have the key on you, which 
I have in my pocket. But these will be nice for when we're on the trail, we won't actually have to put the seatbelt in and we'll be able to drive around without having it beeping at us the entire time. Because on the trails, I get in and out of the vehicle a lot and I honestly don't wanna be putting the seatbelt on every single time. But actually here, so it doesn't honk at me. So the drain is basically just over here underneath the fender and it lives right there so you can see if you reach into your fender it's like right there so it's easy to get with your hand except I'm holding the camera with one hand so Usually you would just reach in here and my hand is literally on it right now and you would just turn it, get your valve open or closed depending on what you're gonna be doing. If you're gonna be fording water, close it. If you're going off-roading, close it. If you're gonna be just driving around, uh, daily driving, you can leave it open. So that's where we're gonna leave ours today. And it is a pretty easy and convenient spot to get to. It's nothing too crazy. And you just got to basically remember, because if you don't, then now you have a straw sitting at the bottom of your airbox that's going to suck up all the water. But other than that, I think we're pretty much done with the Gladiator mods. I will show you guys one more time the fit and finish. It, there is actually a cutout here for the wiper, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. And to be honest, I think I am going to end up painting it. I know it does match because I do have the black roof, but because I have the painted fenders, I think I want to paint this too, especially because of this. I kind of don't like how it just kind of breaks up in this one area and then that side's blue. So I will be picking up some paint to match and I will get this the exact same paint and we'll paint it up. I think that uh, it should look a lot better. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and let me know what you guys think of the snorkel. But to be honest, I like it. And the next step from this one is the one where you would cut a hole in your hood right here and it would run all along the side. Personally, I'm not opposed to those. I just do not want to be cutting my Jeep up just yet. So I think this is the way to go. And we did get the gaps proper after actually installing, I mean, after actually uninstalling that uh, little bit of insulation. So now everything sits how it should. The hood closes and we don't have to worry about any kind of weird gaps or anything like that. You can see it's all uniform all across. So, good to go. And hopefully, we're not going to have to deal with any kind of hydro lock or any kind of water or anything like that. So let's go. Let's put this Jeep away. And I'll give you guys an update on the TJ. So I'm packing up the back for tomorrow. And there's one more thing that I actually forgot that I added today. And it is this little piece of foam. So if you guys have the Mopar hard folding or hard trifold, or if you have any other hard trifold tunnel cover, you'll know that you can lock it in this position. So I can put these straps in over here and then you tighten them down. And this will prevent this from flapping open if you feel like leaving it open this way. This one does not let you lock it in the full upright position. However, you do need to open it sometimes to get some stuff and it ends up contacting the back glass there. So now you don't have to worry about it being metal on glass. It kind of protects your window a little bit. And if you're ever not too gentle, well then hopefully you're not gonna break your window now. And yeah, just a little tip for anybody that has one of these hard, hard a uh, trifold tunnel cover. That shit always gives me like a tongue twister whenever I say it. But I like this thing because it is pretty waterproof and it's just, it's hard, right? Like, so it's not like somebody can just cut it and get into it. But there's your tip of the day. Well, at least we're done with the mods for today. Everything went well, other than having to cut out that insulation. I did not expect that, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. I had to cut it out, I had to cut it out. I really am not kind of feeling any kind of way about it. It is what it is. Most of the people who change their hoods, they don't come with insulation anyway, so it's not a big deal. Plus that stuff ends up rotting and ends up flaking away and it doesn't last forever. So if it's out now, it's out now. But back to the TJ. And we are actually gonna be bringing the TJ back to life. 
I am putting an engine in this thing and I have found actually two different people to put an engine in it because we should have had one in there already. But a few things came up. The original person who was going to put the engine in, the one that we actually went and... Well, that video is not out yet, but the one that we went to go see in the video first, because I've been making that video for like three weeks now. So, uh, so when we when we went to go get, look at that engine, the engine is good, but the guy had a few things come up and he was unable to actually put it in at the time. So he should be able to put it in in the next week or two. I'm thinking probably around two weeks. Maybe I should have it by May 2 for a weekend. So we might be able to bring this thing to Ardbeg. If not, then uh, we still got the Gladiator. And we will be taking that thing out until we get this thing fixed and then we'll still be taking it out but the plan is i have another guy that i found with an engine and we might be able to go there on sunday today's friday tomorrow i'm going off-roading we're going to be taking the gladiator out but on sunday i can go and i can check out that engine so maybe if i have time i'm going to run up there because it's still an hour and a half drive to go see that engine and then i'll see if that one's good if it is good and he can do it a bit sooner then i'll get it done with him but if not then i guess i'll just wait for the original guy because it is what it is i have another jeep to drive it's not like this thing's gonna go anywhere so uh yeah <laughs> that's pretty much the update on the tj so i think we're ready to go hit the trails if you guys do want to see me go hit the trails with the gladiator or with the tj in the future then definitely jump down there hit that subscribe button hit that like button and hopefully i'll see you guys in the next one but until then guys ride safe out there peace